This is a short video demonstrating how report metadata from a Power BI report can contain data points or data values from a underlying semantic model and that you can view those data points or data values even if you don't have access to that semantic model. And also, third, that you can view data points or data values from previous semantic models that that report was connected to. So we're starting off here with a report. It is just a thin report not connected to any semantic model. And we are going to connect to a Power BI semantic model for one that I commonly use for demonstrations. And we are going to create a matrix visual from this model. So this matrix visual is going to contain some sensitive information, specifically employee names and emails. So we have, let's say a matrix. So we have names and emails, we do not need to have values in order to replicate this behavior. So there are a number of circumstances when a report metadata can contain data values or data points. So one of these circumstances are when you for instance, disable auto size width of a matrix, and then you manually set the column widths, and then we save that report. Now, it doesn't matter if we save the report as a Power BI desktop or a PBIX file, a Power BI template or a PBIT file, or a Power BI project or PBIP file. Any format we save it as, we will be able to view the report metadata and we will be able to view the data points in that report metadata. In this case, the values in the columns field wall, which are the employee emails. It also doesn't matter if we're using the new Power BI enhanced report format or PBIR, or if we're using the legacy format. It is human readable in both cases, just PBIR is a little bit easier to read. So I'm now going to save this report. I'm going to save it in a temporary directory, and I'm just going to save it as a PBIP or Power BI project as new report. I'm going to overwrite an existing one. So I've now saved the report, and I'm going to open that report metadata, the definition for the visual, in this case, the matrix. So what we're looking at right now is we are looking at the metadata or the visual config for the uh, matrix that we have on that page uh, called a pivot table visual type uh, in the metadata. We see that we have the field names as well as the table name, which is expected. But if we scroll down farther, we see that we have the actual column values or data points. And in this case, that's sensitive information, personally identifiable information, which is employee emails. So this is an example of how report metadata can have sensitive information or data points. And you can view this report metadata or the data points in the report metadata, even if you do not have access to the underlying semantic model. This happens with any of the Power BI desktop formats. All you have to be able to do is to open the metadata. The only case when you cannot do this is when you set a sensitivity label on a Power BI desktop or PBIX file. So we've established that Power BI report metadata can contain the values of columns or data points in specific circumstances. One example is when you manually set the column widths of a matrix. Another example is when you're setting the default values of filters or of slicers. And another example is when you're setting up conditional formatting, certain types of conditional formatting. To my knowledge, these scenarios are not documented. Now, the next thing I'm going to demonstrate is that a report metadata can contain not only data points from the underlying shared semantic model, but also previous semantic models that that report was historically connected to. So what we're going to do now is we're looking at this matrix. We're going to now change it to a different visual type, like a bar chart or something. And then we'll just add a random measure. It doesn't matter. We'll change it to a line chart, whatever. So we're just creating another visual type. That's all we're doing is we're just, we're making some changes to the visual. We're changing the visual type. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because the visual configuration from the matrix is still going to be remembered by this line chart. So what I'm now going to do 
is I'm going to save this new report. So this, this modified report rather, and I'm going to rebind it to a different semantic model. So I'm going to bind it now to a semantic model that I use for D&D. So it has absolutely nothing in common with the original semantic model. So none of the object names are the same. So as you see, the visual breaks. So we have to set up the visual again. So we're going to add again a random measure, like uh, MPC appeared in number of sessions, MPC name, whatever. Okay. Let's say that we want to go back to a matrix. So we're going back to the matrix visual, the original visual. So, and I'm not sure if this is when this happens, when you go back to the original visual or if it persists across other visual types, I think it depends, but that's not clear to me. So now what we're going to do is we're going to save this as a new report. So sensitive report two, new report two, we're saving it again as a PBIP. And now we're going to open the metadata from the new report. So I'm just opening the definition for the visual. Again, this is just the matrix. So we're opening this again. So we see that we have the matrix. It has MPCs name. So it's the, the name column from the MPCs. Uh, we have a measure as well. The MPC appeared number of sessions. So this has nothing to do with the previous semantic model. But if we keep scrolling down, we have the object names from the previous semantic model and the values. What this means is that there is a footprint, a data footprint that is following this visual around and potentially accumulating when you're reusing the visual. So copying and pasting it between reports, when you're reusing the report and rebinding it to new reports, when you're saving it as a template and then reusing that template, for example, when you distribute it to people within a uh, specific business unit, for example, as a kind of starting point. Now, this is problematic because then this could contain, of course, sensitive information, but also there's absolutely no way to remove this footprint unless you manually modify the config file yourself. So you cannot modify it from within Power BI Desktop and you cannot modify it using, you know, any other tools that I'm aware of. You can only modify it by going in and modifying this JSON file. So ideally, the expected behavior would be that this footprint does not exist, that it does not remember the visual config from when you're changing the visual type, especially when you're switching to a different semantic model because otherwise this is going to result in data values from other semantic models that you don't have access to being visible when you open the metadata in a text editor or in source control, for example, when you're using Git integration. So to review, report metadata can contain data values from both the existing semantic model that it's connected to as well as previous semantic models. And this happens in specific circumstances like conditional formatting or slicer default values, or in this case, when you are manually setting the width of a column in a matrix. So that's just a brief demonstration of this behavior. Um, not ideal.